since I've been over here, uh, but it's nice to be back again. Today we're going to use uh, Eric Nickel as our, um, what would we say, role model and someone we can learn a lot from his life and his words because it is a hundred years since he won the 400 meters in the Paris Olympics. So it's a very special year, this year. And these are some of his words that I will read just before we sing our first two short hymns. Many of us are missing something in life because we are after the second best. I put before you what I have found to be best, one who is worthy of all our devotion, Jesus Christ. He is the saviour for the young and the old. So we're going to sing two little hymns this morning to begin with. Focus my eyes and all that I am. And if we 
we've got some spaces in that day, Lord. Help us just to seek and obey your guidance as to how we should use that time. Lord, we have specially to thank and praise you this morning for Eric Little, for his service to you, for his commitment to you. In his 43 years only of his life, he tried to serve you the best way he could. He obeyed you and he followed you in this country and in China. Thank you for his parents. We thank you for parents like the ones of that little tiny one here today. We pray that you would help them to be good parents and to bring their little one up in the knowledge and the love of you. Lord, we acknowledge as Eric J that you give us gifts. You give him the gift of being a fast runner. But we thank you that he worshipped the giver rather than the gift. We thank you for the gifts that you have given each of us, everyone different, to serve you. We thank you that you are the one who has given us those gifts. Help us to use them wisely. We thank you and praise you for Eric's selflessness, compassion, integrity, and tireless dedication to improving the lives of others. And we acknowledge that it was his personal relationship with you that motivated him and inspired him to do all the amazing things he did, whether on the athletics track, in Scotland, or elsewhere. We thank you and praise you for his calling to use his gifts in sport and in mission and in serving others. And we thank you and praise you that like Eric, we too can enter into a personal relationship with you through the same means making Jesus welcome into our lives as Lord and Saviour, and to see that purpose for our lives unfold. May we have the grace to run a good race for you, just as Eric did. And we ask these things in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to sorry, feel a little bit like a teacher here, which I was in my past life. The people on this side of the room have a sheet with some statements about Eric Little. And I want you to decide whether they're true or false. Okay, so that's the sheet that says Eric Little, facts, true or false. So do take one to share. The people on this side have upside down some uh, sheets of paper. Please muddle them up before you turn them over. So take the paper clip off, put them on the table, muddle them up, and see if you can put them in order of what you think uh, is the order of his life from the beginning to the end. So I give you a few minutes just to do that first of all. All right, I think we'll uh, move on and we'll play you a little short video which might just give you a few more answers and then I'll tell you the two false answers to put your minds at rest. Okay. It's a very short little video. Um, there's two. This one is more aimed at children. The second one tells you very much the same story uh, which we'll play in a little while. Very, very short. Just three minutes long.
still inspires people a lot when Jesus has to just live. Number one, he didn't play for the national football team, that's false. He was born in Scotland, no he wasn't, he was born in China. Um, offered to change lanes with a less experienced athlete? Yes he did, true. Uh, in the 1924, I uh, had to change races to the 400, that's probably the, the thing you knew most about him. That because he refused to run in the 100 metres on the Sunday, um, there was another opportunity which was a race he wasn't experienced in the 400, so that's true. The next one is false. Um, in the, he had the outside lane, which wasn't the easiest lane. The one about the Olympic gold medal coming through the post, well it used to. It did used to have all these fancy presentations that you have nowadays. So it did come through the post, it's true. Okay. And sadly he didn't uh, compete in the 1928 Olympics. This is false. Uh, he could have, but instead he was focusing on going to China, which we'll talk about again later. Um, this is true about his family. It had to be, uh, had to escape to Canada, but Eric stayed behind. And sadly, he wasn't reunited with his family and he never met his third daughter. And it, he did die at the age of 43. Uh, imprisoned in internment camp. Some people waiting to come in. Hello. Come in. Come in, ladies. That's our tea, ladies. Yeah, it won't be long before that. Okay. So now, um, these are things. A few things about Eric Little. But on your table, you also have a sheet with some readings on. And I'd like you to pick one of those readings at your table. And somebody can read it to the group, maybe not enough for everyone to see. And I want you to think about what this shows you, um, how it shows you something of Eric's faith and values when we compare that verse to what we know so far about Eric Little. What does this passage show about his faith and his values? His values, what he thought was right and wrong, and his faith, his belief, his trust in God and Jesus, and what was important. And I'd like you, somebody in the group to feed back in a minute about that. So please choose a verse, read the verse to your group, and, and try and link that up with Eric's faith and values. Okay, this group's going to tell you which verse, and then they'll tell you something about it. We chose the first one. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. So we, we thought it meant that when you go through really hard times, you must keep going to the cross and pray to the Lord all your trust in the Lord and when it passes uh, you know that God has promised those who love him that we will manage to cope with the difficulties in life if we keep trusting in God and then we just go through life knowing that God is with us and, uh, and Eric did that and yeah. then certainly uh, most of us go through really hard things at some hard time, times in our life but if you have faith, it makes it so much more, it, it's easier, not, not easier, but um, it helps to cope. Thank you. That was definitely the case, of course, when he didn't, uh, when he couldn't compete in the best race, um, especially later in China, uh, in the internment camp as well. Okay. Uh, have we got a verse? Which verse? Yeah, 
blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the kind of life that God has promised to those who love him. And how does that fit in? Well, obviously quite an effort getting to the length of getting to the Olympics. Uh, lots of training involved in that. And then further on, coping with his time, time in and time in. Which must have been again quite a trial. No story about that. But, uh, whatever it was, it must have been quite a trial for him. Thank you. This was the first group finish. <laughs> hey, we'll be towards the, the third. Maybe. Um, do you not know that the race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. To do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last for um, the, the point of that was, first of all, it's a taking part that counts, not the winning. And the second point was that uh, the medal is a short-term thing, but the relationship with God is a long-term thing. And I think those, those apply for a little. Thank you very much, that's great. Okay, let's keep up. Well, it just, I just did a third one. I was going to just repeat. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly, but that gentleman said there. Okay, so you want to add anything? No. Okay. <laughs> you got all the light, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, we've chosen the second, second verse. Mm -hmm. Train yourself to be godly for physical training is of some value. Sorry, I haven't got the glasses on today. Uh, godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Uh, this is where Eli Pogel's love of God throughout his whole life. Uh, and when he chose to ignore that race in preference for worshiping God on that Sunday, Lovely, thank you. Well done. Uh, this table, who's going to be the first person here? Yeah, we can really agree. We also took item three, and it's really about the, you know, the first three things we're focusing on, even if it is a race, not focusing on that as a state. The, the concept of the crown is, is slightly confusing in, in the sense that, that you know, is there a the crown or, or a different crown and what you what you should focus on. So even though you can train hard and you shouldn't just run in a way as to get the prize, you should do it with a with a different focus. Thank you very much. Anyone want to say anything about anything? No, I don't think Lucky guy. Did you digress? No? Anything to add? No? Thank you very much. Um, we chose number one as well. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. As when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. But God has promised to those who love him. I think this very constitutes what I see in the barrack today. On the, um, in regards to his beliefs and ethos about life. Thank you very much. You've earned your tea now, I think. <laughs> so we shall have tea now. Do we need to tell the tea ladies we're ready? Thank you. So we're going to sing our next hymn number 502, Take My Life. And obviously the one about Take My Feet was very relevant to Eric Little. But so was Take My Voice and Take My Hands, because he served and he spoke and he ran. So let's sing our next hymn.
um, um, friend and colleague of Eric Little said this, sport is one of the most productive fields for Christian work. For it remains generally true that the man who is a real sportsman in athletics, who can play the game under all circumstances, fight against odds and disappointments without losing heart or temper, and knows how to take a beating, he is the man who is most likely to be a true sportsman in the greater game of life. And as you saw from the readings, and as you thought about it with Eric Little, there was the medal, the gold medal. There was the, that kind of crown, like the laurel wreaths in the old days of the Olympics. But there was a greater crown of life, which Eric Little was aiming for. And sometimes when comparing what he should do on the sports field and what he should do in China, this was often the something that he thought about. He had a conversation with his mother, and I'm reading from a little book, a new book, about him. That night, Eric asked his mother what she thought. Sitting together at the kitchen table, she reached for Eric's strong hand. <coughs> Eric loved the feel of her hands, hands made strong by work and years spent in the harsh Chinese climate, because his parents were missionaries in China. Yeah? Hands that had always calmed him and then gently urged him in the right direction. Hands that prayed to God. Mother, does God really want me to run? Turning his hand several times in her own, the older woman looked at her grown son. God has given you a tremendous gift. Of that I'm sure, Eric. But you know my plans. You know that I've always wanted to work eventually with Father in China and first with Professor Cullen. How will my running and now all this training help me to get there? You won't go to China for a few years, Eric. And how long can you run like this? I believe the answer is the same. A few years. Perhaps this is God's plan. To run now and to give God all the glory for your gift. A reporter asked him, now that you've achieved your greatest desire, which was winning a, 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 an important race in Scotland, how do you feel about competing in the Paris Games? Eric closed his eyes and a curious expression came over his face. His greatest desire? Ever since he was a young boy, he'd been consumed with one dream. But how could he explain the lure of China when a gold medal was being dangled before his eyes? How could he explain the peace that filled his heart whenever he thought of his beloved parents, whenever he prayed that their mission might be his? And then one Glasgow newspaper, before he sets off for China, has this little tiny uh, poem with a cartoon, with him in running shorts, tank top, and a clergyman's collar. You can maybe imagine the cartoon. This was the little verse. For China now, another race he runs, as sure and straight as those Olympic ones. And if the ending's not so simply known, we'll judge he'll make it, since his speeds, his own. You'll know something of this uh, quote probably, but some of you. I believe God made me for a purpose, for China, but he also made me fast, and when I run, I feel his pleasure. To give him up will be to hold him in contempt. To win is to honour him. So that's one aspect of the dilemmas that uh, Eric faced against all those who would say, oh, but you're so good at this, you've got to keep going with this. But no, he knew God had a bigger and greater plan. And of course he didn't. What he didn't know is how that plan would end. And yet he'd serve God to the last. Another thing that seems to be very important to him is about obeying God's will. Obeying and honour 
like that little slip of paper. If you've seen the film, Chariots of Fire, God will honour those who honour him. And this is what uh, one of the things he says in his manual for the Christian disciple. You do not have to be famous or skilled to make a difference for Christ. God only asks that you serve him faithfully and wholeheartedly in all you do. Honour God in all you do, and he will honour your obedience with a life that counts for eternity. He says, obedience to God's will is the secret of spiritual knowledge and insight. It's not willingness to know, but willingness to do God's will that brings certainty. And he did that, as Cullen said, with absolute surrender, spending a good time every morning on a quiet time with prayer and Bible reading, getting up early in the morning. And the book says here, those early morning appointments with God were the source of little spiritual strength and consistency. I wonder whether we've forgotten these early morning appointments with God and that they can be the source of our spiritual strength and consistency. Another aspect is to do with circumstances and victory and glory. He says, circumstances may appear to wreck our lives and God's plans, but God is not helpless among the ruins. God's love is still working. He comes in and takes the calamity and uses it victoriously, working out his wonderful plan of love. At the moment I have a friend's daughter who is, has cancer in, the, in her lungs and in her bones and just started chemotherapy. But she's a Christian and she's holding on to God in this time. And none of her other siblings are. And so maybe out of that, what will be within the next year probably, a tragedy, there may be the triumph of her siblings coming to know God as they see how she faces these circumstances with strength and comfort from God and her father. He says, Eric Little, victory over all the circumstances of life comes not by might, nor by power, but by practical confidence in God and allowing his spirit to dwell in our hearts and control our actions and emotions. Learn in the days of ease and comfort to think in terms of the prayer that follows so that when the days of hardship come, you will be fully prepared and equipped to meet them. And maybe this famous one some of you might know, in the dust of defeat, as well as the laurels of victory, there is a glory to be found if one has done one's best. For me it was very interesting to read, and feel free to look up afterwards, the sport chaplaincy, particularly the Olympics, is something that is really important. 120 chaplains at those Olympics <coughs> recently to help people, especially if they don't win that laurel of victory and that they feel in the dust of defeat. But for all kinds of other reasons, uh, those chaplains were on site to help people, whether they were Protestant, <coughs> whether they were Catholic, whether they were Hindu or Buddhist or Muslim, or with no beliefs at all, there were people there to listen and to support them in those times. And those Christian uh, Olympians, many of them are using their ability and their gift uh, on their Instagrams and in forming charities because they are role models, their role model was for other people. And this is what Eric Little says, maybe a challenge to us. Are you living up to the standards of Jesus Christ? We're looking for men and women who are willing to answer the challenge Christ is sending out. Have you sought a leader in everyday life? In Jesus Christ you will find a leader worthy of your devotion and mine. I looked for one I could admire and I found Christ. 
I am a debtor, and no wonder I am a debtor, for he has given me a message which can only be experienced. So are we the men and women willing to answer the challenge that Christ is sending out? He also said, we are all missionaries. We don't need to go to China. In fact, as an aside, I um, read in the Life and Work magazine about a St. Andrew's Centre in Cairo where asylum seekers are coming from over the Middle East and North Africa uh, to be helped and to, to get some assistance from Somalia and Sudan and from Iraq and Iran and Eritrea and Ethiopia and goodness knows all where. And I thought, here I am, right in Aberdeenshire, and I know people who need someone to listen to them from all those countries of the world. Eric says, we're all missionaries, we carry our religion with us, or we allow our religion to carry us. Wherever we go, we either bring people nearer to Christ, or we repel them from Christ. We're working for the great kingdom of God, the time when all people will turn to Christ as their leader, and will not be afraid to own him <coughs> as such. And later we're going to pray for people in China, because China, of course, <coughs> is the country where uh, Eric went, and that was very important, uh, that we continue to pray for that huge country where there are many Christians. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for Eric Little, for someone who's, who followed you, who obeyed you, followed your will, often against all the other voices that were coming at him. We thank you that he trusted you, that he listened to your word to him, that he read your word, that he consulted you uh, and others for wisdom as to what he should do and the path he should follow. We thank you for all he sacrificed, sending his family home but then never seeing them again, serving those in the internment camp, even the children, by organizing games on the Sunday, the Lord's Day, the day he wouldn't run, but knowing that serving people was more important. And we thank you for all that he means to those who have continued to keep his memory alive a hundred years later. And we just pray that you would help us to serve you as he did to the end, to win that crown of life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we have our offering and then our intercession.
who can't see how there could be a crown of life at the end as they're in the middle of so many heartaches and difficulties. We take a moment just now in silence to pray for those we know who need your help, your strength, your comfort, your reassurance, and our help and comfort and reassurance at this time. each man, woman and child that has been prayed for this morning and bless each one of you who could in some way support them in a word, in a text, in an email, in a letter, in a visit and in continual prayer for them. Now Lord we pray for China. As China continues to tighten its grip on religious freedom this year, we pray for wisdom for Christians to know how they should continue to honour and to worship God under changing circumstances. We pray for young people who are technically not allowed to attend church. We pray that God would strengthen their faith and give them and their parents <coughs> courage. We ask you to strengthen and encourage church leaders who are pressured and monitored. We pray for those who become Christians who weren't before Buddhists or Muslims, for whom it is very hard. Lord, we pray this prayer from open doors. Father God, we ask that you would be with and bless your people in China. As the pressure grows, we ask that you would give them a sense of rest and peace, that they would know you are with them. Please help young believers find a way to learn more about you and for their parents to know how to wisely train their children and share the gospel. We lift up church leaders who are targeted, that they will have courage and wisdom as they care for their congregations. We pray also for believers who have converted from the faith of their family or ethnic group, and maybe therefore lost their family and their feeling of belonging. Please help them know that they aren't alone they have found a new family and a new father, a heavenly father. We ask all these things we have prayed silently and out loud in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now our final hymn, a good going one. I think I've, I've done it with you before. Good Sally Army one. I'll go in the strength of the Lord.
brochure, but you can find it online. I think the words are, are really encouraging words for Eric Little and all those who serve the Lord. So keep hold of what is good and avoid all forms of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, make you holy through and through and keep you sound in spirit, soul and body, free of any fault when our Lord Jesus Christ comes. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and all those whom we love wherever they are, now and forever.